Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath bore me on his back a thousand times, and now how abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed, I know not how oft. Where be your ga gibs now, your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar? Not one now to mock your own grinning, quite chap-fallen. Now get you to my lady's chamber, and tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favor she must come, make her laugh at that. Prithee, Horatio, tell me one thing. All right, that was also from Hamlet, obviously, since Horatio was there. So, welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Alter Ego Male. Mm. Yeah, and um, hello, this is the City of Literature. We are almost done with this, and I am almost out of quotes from Hamlet, so I'm not sure how many other things I could come up <laughs> with. But, at any rate, let's get going. Okay. Set this this time. And quickly save it, because we haven't saved in quite a while, actually. Not since you were 26 years old. No, that would be kind of sad if we lose all the, all the progress so far. <laughs> A relative, whom you haven't seen in many years, calls you up on the phone with a hard luck story. He needs approximately $5,000 in order to keep his house. You have heard that he has certain bad habits, though. When he speaks with you, he sounds decent enough. Perhaps he really has fallen on hard times. He appeals you to, to you for the loan, which he assures you he will repay within the year. You can be sympathetic or unsympathetic. Uh, sympathetic. Lend him or not? Uh, lend him the money. You are very generous, but also a bit naive. As you discover, if you add a dollar for every excuse he comes up with, you would have been repaid. Unfortunately, you do not... You get uh, only the excuses, not the cash. You must have had some fantasy that he might strike it rich and repay you doubly or triply. Some fantasies can get very expensive. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not like you know, that was a lot of money for me. Yeah, I earned a lot of money from before. <laughs> See, you're 56 years old, by the way. Wow. Uh, and yeah. you've got $40,000 left, so you're still good. Yeah. Oh, good, this is a sexual one. A longtime friend and confidant tells you that he is having, pro having an unusual sexual problem with his wife. It seems that he can no longer get it or maintain an erection, like he used to. <laughs> you can be sympathetic or not. Uh, sympathetic. Tell him to see a doctor, tell him not to worry about it, or tell him that's life. What? <laughs> what is the last one? Tell him that's life. Oh, that's life? Okay, um... And the first one was... Tell him to see a doctor. Uh, okay, and tell him that's life. Oops, I actually then did the doctor. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, anyway. He returns to tell you that the doctor told him that his problems might have been caused by high blood pressure medication he has been taking. He feels relieved. Now there is only one small difficulty. You notice that you are having the same type of problem. What will you do? Get anxious, see a doctor, ignore it. Uh, get anxious. Getting anxious only makes the problem worse. It seems that no matter how hard you try, you have difficulty getting an erection. Write it off uh -oh. as the effects of aging or see a doctor. See a doctor. The doctor gives you a checkup and tells you that there is nothing wrong with your system. Anxiety can certainly affect sexual functioning. Perhaps you, when your friend told you that he was having difficulties and made you so anxious that you developed some of your own. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. You have seen your friend John and his wife Marcia socially for a long time. They have a very peculiar relationship. Marcia insists on controlling every aspect of John's life. One day, when you are talking to John, he confesses about three years ago he began seeing another woman, one who is beautiful, kind, gentle, and loving. He has been thinking about leaving Marcia for this other woman, but is unsure if he can. You can be uncomfortable or comfortable? Uh, comfortable. I know about the subject. <laughs> <laughs> you can don't give him any advice or give him advice? I give him advice. What kind of advice are you going to give him? See a marriage counselor, continue the affair, divorce Marsha and marry the other woman, divorce Marsha and marry neither one. Um, I wouldn't recommend go. I wouldn't recommend going to the counselor because uh, 
<laughs> last time I did it went through bad and I think it was said that he could leave his wife alright and marry the other woman or marry no one marry the other one very simple advice, just like that. Pick up a whole relationship, a whole life, and transfer it to another. <laughs> Think about what phase of life you are in now. Chances are John and Marcia have been together for 20 years or more. For a guy who was used to getting structure and direction from a person like Marcia, this kind of move would be terrifying. Your intentions are good. No, it's not. You just want to destroy. <laughs> You're evil. You're like Chancellor <laughs> Palpatine. You want to see John happier than he is now. No, you're like a Sith Lord. <laughs> the fact that regardless of how a relationship looks to outsiders, the two people stay together, they usually have complementary sets of needs. Believe it or not, he may actually desire a woman who is domineering as Marcia. Your advice to him is logical, but people often do not act that way. As a result, John's ambivalence turns to anger, which he directs at you for butting into his life. Oh, no. You are too old for this episode. Oh, wow. What? That was kind of uh, uh, mean. <laughs> At a carnival, a friend tries to convince you to have your cards read by a Madame Nastasha, a psychic medium. You can be frivolous or skeptical. Uh, skeptical. See the medium or not? Mm, see the medium. You step inside the dark room, Madame Nastasha. Natasha looks more like a looks more like large Natasha and fills most of the space. You notice that she has a kind face and a gentle voice. The fee for reading is fifty dollars. Cash only, okay. please, darling. Natasha asks if you want to continue. Yes or no? Yes. I thought you were skeptical. Oh well, it's your money. Thank you, darling. Let me see. Hmm, these voices of e <laughs> these voices of evil. They are very very powerful. They are needing big spell. This spell will read you of them for a long, long time. The cost of such a spell is minimal. $500, all materials included. Compared to the havoc caused by the absence of the spell. Are you feeling? No, you are evil. <laughs> <laughs> so, da or niet? Uh, what, what was the last one? Niet. Yes or no? Uh, no, okay. Um, take, uh, yes. You're gonna rid yourself of the evil? No! <laughs> no, no, no. Don't no. pay her, it's a scam. Good thinking. At $50, you were just a bit gullible. At $100, you were a sucker. At $500, I would have tried to sell you a nice piece of real estate right near the floor to Everglades. <laughs> You and a group of friends are sitting around discussing people that you used to know. It seems like the that an oddball acquaintance of yours who became a recluse, always holed up in his workshop, has just invented a pocket golf ball washer that has earned him a large fortune. After making all of that money, instead of retiring, he has chosen to donate it to a charity for homeless inventors and is now back at work. Sure enough, just two weeks after this discussion, he shows up at a social function. Naturally, everyone who speaks with him has a remark to make about his behavior. Eventually, he wanders over to the group of people with whom you are having a discussion. You can be disdainful, slash sarcastic, or supportive. Um, sarcastic. You can say something positive about what he has done, or make a wise guy comment. Make a wise guy comment. <laughs> This must have been a very easy set of choices for you. In adolescence, it is understandable that people who are different become scapegoats. And in adults, this behavior is more difficult to understand. He is, however, he is, however, he is tr different, true, but he may also be a nice person. He walks out of the gathering looking lonely and depressed. He is still the type of person who will probably not be understood by many. Oh, okay. A teenage girl named Kathy Reinhardt works at the dry cleaning sc store you use. One evening, you arrive at the store just as it is closing. You absolutely need the clothes tonight. Kathy is already out the door because you know Kathy by name and because you also know that she is friendly. You feel that she will reopen the store and get you your clothes. You can be friendly or anxious. Uh, awesome. Friendly or anxious. What? Well, say it again. Friendly or anxious? Uh, friendly. Ask her to reopen the store or decide to wait until the store reopens. Uh, ask her to reopen the store. Your social skills aren't good enough to get her to get the, to the trouble of reopening the store. She wants to go out with her friends tonight and this would hold her up. 
She calls out to you uh. saying that a time alarm has been set and her boss will think she is going in to do something illegal if she trips it by reopening it. Company policy, you know. Sorry. Uh. You have just walked into a store and there is apparently no one around to take your order. It seems that the person who should be waiting on you has stayed out of sight. For a few moments, waiting in the store with you is a teenage boy, about 16 years old, wearing an old blue t-shirt and a pair, an old t-shirt and a pair of blue jeans. He must have arrived a few seconds before you. He is tapping his foot lightly on the ground, uh, on the, lightly to the sound of imaginary rock and roll. Playing in his head, the proprietor steps out from the room at the back of the store, makes eye contact with you, and says, "May I help you? You can be neutral or concerned." Uh, neutral. You can say something to the store manager about the boy or place your order. Say something to the store owner. It's hard to imagine what a neutral kind of comment concerning the boy would be. I'm sure you wouldn't say something like, that's a teenage boy over there. To say anything of relevance concerning the boy, you would have to have some emotional connection to it. <laughs> your car has been taken in... When will this set end? in for some minor repair work. The work will not cost you any appreciable amount of money, but it will be an inconvenience since you will have to drop the car off at the repair shop early in the morning and rearrange your usual travel plans. Luckily, you have two cars, so... Yeah? You call in to make an appointment, and the service representative tells you that repairs are made on a first-come, first-served basis. You can be angry or calm. Angry. You can delay getting the repairs done or bring the car in to be repaired to be fixed. Uh, bring it to be fixed. Uh, when will you bring the car in? As early as possible, late morning on the way to work. Um, as early as possible. There's a long line of people already in front of you. Apparently they have been living at the service station, anticipating a car repair fad that seems to be sweeping the area. They are all holding coupons, which ran in the local paper. Since you don't have one... You will be paying regular prices. To make matters worse, since you do not have an appointment any place else, you cannot take your car elsewhere to be fixed that day. You can wait for another day or set up camp and wait in line. Uh, wait for the other day. If it isn't major, you can probably live with it, right? Wrong. Clank, clank, grind, sputter, cough, silence. Your car is no longer among the living. Towing, repair, and service charges cost $500. Uh, during, that was, that was sad. <laughs> during a quiet time, you begin to reflect on your life, your accomplishments, and the people around you whom you have formed attachments. Uh, you have lived the majority of your life, and now seems a good time as any to take inventory. As you look around, you find there are those much younger than you who have accomplished more. You have friends who have beautiful wives. <laughs> you had one, but you got rid of her. And large vacation houses in the country. You have a yacht! Okay? Yeah, no. <laughs> you know people who have grown up to be great thinkers and scientists. There are people living who have made con great contributions to society. You can be depressed or content. Well, oh, yeah. Um, uh, content. See guidance? I'm happy because I have a lot of stuff, so... <laughs> <laughs> you can see guidance or remain as you are. Remain as I, I am. A man with a yacht must either be quite healthy or resistant to facing some of the typical worries associated with this time of life. In case you are interested, send some of your friends are finding themselves terribly ambivalent about their lives right about now. They are experiencing mood swings, bouts of guilt, shame, and anxiety, even panic. Since you are not experiencing any of these, it would be inappropriate to offer words of encouragement. I hope you, your outlook remains positive throughout the rest of the game. Okay, broke the fourth wall there a little bit, <laughs> but whatever. You are on a sightseeing cruise, on your yacht, obviously. You hear a cry and see a small boy fall over the railing. Why do you have a small boy on your yacht? Into the water. There doesn't seem to be enough time to call for help because the boat is moving too quickly. You can panic or remain calm. Um, remain calm. Call for help or jump into the water after him. Jump into the water after him. Calmness is a trait that is central to your personality. In this instance, you use it to react quickly and effectively. As you enter the water, you spot the boy about 25 yards to your left. You can call out to the boy or save your energy. 
Um, car, um, to the boy. This was a good idea. The sound of your voice is comforting and helps orient the boy in the proper direction. Eventually you get in, get to the boy. As you clutch him in your arms, you see a small motorized raft from the sightseeing boat heading towards you. Your heroic effort helped save the boy's life. The next day, newspaper and television reports chronicle your heroic deed. You are quite a remarkable person. Ah, awesome. Yeah, so all nice to me. <laughs> Your accountant suggests some creative accounting techniques that are guaranteed to reduce the amount of money you will be giving to Uncle Sam this year. The techniques have one minor disadvantage. They are in, in that gray area of accounting practices that fall dangerously close to being, heaven forbid, illegal. How gray oh. the area is depends on the skill of your accountant, your willingness to see things his way, and the probability that your tax return will be flagged for audit. It's April Fool's Day, a mere fortnight away from the Day of Reckoning. You can be anxious slash paranoid or confident slash trusting. I'm paranoid. You can tell the accountant to go for it or tell the accountant to be prudent. And uh, tell him to go for it. This will never do. Only coolness under pressure will snatch victory from the jaws of the IRS auditor when you're going to get rough. You would crack under the pressure. Your accountant tells you that unless you are willing to take the plunge with the right attitude, you're not th his man. No sissies here, fella. You wind up going the safe route. Eventually, you and your accountant split up. You go your way, he goes to the big house. Oh, no. The big house is jail, in case you didn't know. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they ain't got three or something. At the last minute, you become the only person available to drive a group of five howling, screeching, rambunctious, overactive first graders to their first school play. You can be horrified, slightly put off, or happy. Um, happy. You can drive the children, make up an excuse not to drive them. And drive the children. What a wonderful human being. The children pile into the car yelling and screaming, their eyeballs bulging out of their sockets from excitement. <laughs> Two blocks from the school auditorium, one of the children reports that he has forgotten an important stage prop for the show. He is Mr. Sun, and he has forgotten his Mr. Sun Ray hat. Of course, you must return home to retrieve the hat. When you arrive at the auditorium for the second time, you are informed of another cast catastrophe. The giant mushroom has fallen ill with chicken pox. Would you be willing to fill in for him, please? Yes or no? Mm, uh, yes. Bravo! Your giant mushroom performance is riveting. You could easily win the Tony Award for Best Supporting Role as a Fungus. Hey. Ah. <laughs> hey, Stein Eric. You're a real fung guy. Awesome. That was good. You have a small appliance that is broken, but can definitely be fixed with a little tinkering. Motivated to repair it or lazy? Uh, uh, lazy. Tinker with it or throw it out and buy a new one? Throw it out and buy a new one. <laughs> Sometimes the amount of aggravation something like this can cause far outweighs the practical value of fixing it. Mm. I don't know what you're supposed to do. We have done everything in this mission except for this one that you're too old for. So, mm. I guess... Maybe you can spend time with your daughter? No. Yeah. Can't do anything for work? You don't have a girlfriend? Can we buy anything? Is um, the game for good to do you think? I hope not. I um, hope not too. Let's buy a library of... Should probably do some sports equipment since you're about to die. <laughs> All right, there. There we go. You have just passed through middle adulthood. Well, your physical is really bad. Uh, your family life has been... Oh, I've skipped it too fast. You can go back and watch it in the video. During this phase of life, your body doesn't always respond the way your mind would like it to. A sore back after a hard day's work or sore feet and legs after a long walk are not uncommon. In general, you are not very healthy. Fortunately... You don't have to worry about drugs or alcohol ruining your health. Socially, you are doing fine, although you do not have a steady partner at the present time. There's always the next life phase, if that, is, if that is what you are aiming for. If you are lonely, why not try the relationship icon? Then, again, being a confirmed bachelor does have a share of rewards. 
Now regarding your emotional and personality development, your trustworthiness and sense of fair play are obvious to most people around you. Now that your wife's gone, you become much more, much more trustworthy. Even though we all have our secrets, you are doing a very good job keeping your wilder side under control. You seem to have negotiated your midlife crisis without becoming depressed. You can be sensible and understanding. You are usually cool, calm, and collected. People see you as an extremely wise person. Why? <laughs> they rely on you often for the advice and are pleased with the results when they get they get from interacting with you. The next phase of life is full of mixed blessings. You may feel old and lonely some days and cheerful and strong on others. Our society certainly has its share of prejudices against older folks, but you can have rich and rewarding experiences despite this. You will have your chance to thumb your nose at people who think you are too old to live it up a little. After all, you were doing most of these things and enjoying them long before these people were toilet trained. Welcome to old age. It is not white hair that in the that engenders wisdom. Yeah. Holy. Is this... This is it, and we will end the recording. Ooh. Ooh, there is a new table thing here. I think that's where you die. Oh, no. Well, of old age, obviously. Anyway. Oh, okay. So that is it for this recording set of Alter Ego male version. We finally found it, and it's like, what? five in the morning for Stein Eric, so he probably wants to go to sleep pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, I need to go to sleep, so... <laughs> you may have noticed I was rushing through the last few parts. That was why. Anyway... Yeah, and I was, like, confused and stuff. I was... Yeah, it's because I'm not myself on time. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, when we come back in the next part, we will have... Yeah. Stein Eric... Yeah, I will have a lot of energy, and, uh, yeah... And then we will experience the end of Stein Eric's life. I hope you have been enjoying this Let's Play and been enjoying the female version of it as well. That's it yeah. for now, and we will see you guys later. Kiss, kiss. Thanks for watching. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.